Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where I simplify tech and simplify the web. And in this video today, I will be simplifying the concept of the bouncing and I'll also be showing how to implement this in JavaScript. And I'll be using this simple project that I have here to explain this. And I also want to say this is not the only application of the bouncing. It can be used in other areas or other use cases, but this is one major way you can improve the performance of your applications with the bouncing. So before I show you this um, UI part, let me show you a bit from the code. So in the code here, I have an input, which has the search input ID. I have a P tag, which has the result ID, but it's currently empty. And then I also link a script tag, which I'll show you in the next, in the next file. So I get the search input and the results from the DOM. And then I also have this search function. This search function receives an object and that object has the query argument and ideally this is supposed to be a search operation maybe making a request to the server to get results based on a query but for this video i'm just going to show you i'm just going to add this to the dom using the inner html property and on the search input i have an input event listener such that uh, on typing in that input then i call the search function and i pass the value that has been typed to the query and this would be in the result p tag so let me show you how that works now on the screen. So this is it. I'm going to type hello, H-E-E-L-O. Now one thing you would observe here is that when I typed H, the search function is called. When I type E, the search function is called again. When I type L, L, O, the search function is called. So here the search function is literally called five times. And even if I type this very fast, you can see it's still called five times. This can affect the performance of your application and even the user experience. And the reason for this is if the search function, for example, is doing something expensive or something that could possibly delay, and you are doing this on every input, even when it's typed so fast, that can affect the user experience because the function is called literally every time. So the concept of the bouncing or the application of the bouncing here is to reduce the rate at which the function is called. It works on the principle of waiting. So you are waiting for the user to stop typing before you make that request. Now you can have different waiting periods. You can have a one second waiting period. You can have one minute waiting period. But basically what you are doing is when you type H, you are going to wait for one minute or one second let me use one second for this example one minute feels like a stretch but you're going to wait for one second before you call this search function here and if the user types something before that one second is complete let's say the user types e before that one second is complete then you are going to restart the timer and you start counting again from zero to one second so what this means is for example if you type he and you wait for one second and you type LLO and you wait for another one second, it means the search function would be called two times. And let's say you type H-E-L-L-O very fast, then the search function would be called only once. This is the concept of the bouncing. So let me head now to show you how to implement this in JavaScript. I'm just going to refresh this page. So down here, I'm going to create the debounce function. And this debounce function is going to receive two arguments. It's going to receive the function that you want to debounce, and it's also going to receive a delay. Like for how long do you want to wait before you call this function? Now this function is working based on two ideas. So we're going to use the set timeout from the timeout API that the browser provides. So basically you're going to set a timeout that a function should be declared after some certain seconds, after one second, just as you know, set timeout works in JavaScript. And what you're also going to use is clear timeout from the timeout API. So basically with clear timeout, you're going to say, if this user types anything within this one second period, you are going to clear the previous timeout and then you call set timeout again. So that's the idea. It's set timeout, clear timeout, set timeout, and then if the user waits for one second, then you call the search function. So I'm going to show you the implementation here. So first we're going to declare a timeout ID and we don't assign any value here. And the reason why we need the timeout ID is clear timeout needs the timeout ID to cancel a timeout that you have declared previously. 
So you have let timeout ID and then you're going to return a function. And in this function, you can, you know, receive some arguments here. Now, the reason why you're returning a function is so that you can preserve this timeout ID in this function. This is the function that you are going to attach to the search function, which I would show you soon. So right here, you can check if timeout ID exists, then you call clear timeout and timeout ID. This means if you have already declared a previous set timeout and the timeout ID has been updated, then you clear it. Also, you can now say timeout ID is equals to set timeout. And then you're going to call this function here, which you want to debounce. You're going to call that function with the argument. And then you're also going to pass a delay. So the set timeout expression returns an ID. And this means you're going to update the timeout variable here. And then you can clear it here. So this is basically how the debounce function works. This is basically how it is. You can do more advanced stuff if you want to really go advanced. But this is basically how it is. Now, how do we tile this to the search function? And we'll come to this point here. I'm going to comment that. Then up here, you're going to create a different function, which is the bounce search function. And this debounce search function is going to take this debounce function. And then you're going to pass in this search function. You're also going to pass a delay. I'm just going to use one second, which is 1000 milliseconds. Now, when you call this debounce with this search function, this is it here. The delay here, this is it. Now, this debounce is going to return this function to this variable, which means you can now call this variable like this. So that was why we had to return a function. So we can pass this function to this variable and we can also preserve the timeout ID. So this is it now. Now we have a debounced search function. So down here, you can now use this debounced search function and you can pass the query with the e target dot value. This is a normal search function. This is a debounced search function. And you have this. Now when you go back to the UI, you refresh. When you type H, you can see it waits for one second before it deploys it on the screen. When you type ELL, -L, you're going to see it's only called once because you waited after the HELL. -E -L. If you also type HELLO, -E it's going to wait for one second. If you type um, WORD, it's going to wait for another one second. Now you can see that it's not called on H E L L O. It literally waits for one second. And let me also try something. If you type H and before one second you type E, you can see it basically restarted the timer and then it's only called this search function once. This is how debouncing can be applied to your applications because there are so many search inputs uh, for searching different stuff in applications today and you don't want to keep calling requests as your user is typing. You want to wait until a recommended time where you feel, okay, this is right. This is a good time to call this function. And this is how debouncing works. So just like a summary, this is the bounce, this is the debounce function. You have the timeout ID in this function here. You, you, if the timeout ID exists, you're going to clear the timeout. And then here you're going to also update the timeout ID by setting another timeout expression and you also have the delay you can also make this two seconds three seconds however you feel necessary if you found this video helpful kindly like it kindly share it and also subscribe for more tips around web development